Hi, thanks for joining me. So, uh, today we're going to do another collection voodoo video. And uh, I don't think Houdini is going to be joining us. He, uh, hey bud. <laughs> How you doing? Um, he's getting bigger. He's probably a good three feet now, at least. And, uh, you know, he's going to be four or five feet once he's done growing. But, um, but, yeah, you know, it's a little easier for him to get on the floor from the table. And uh, he's not really liking just hanging out in some of the stuff that uh, I have for him to chill out in. So, uh, you know, unless I was going to bring him out and just put him in his container, um, I think we'll just leave him in. But I thought I'd let you guys say hi. Let him check check out the camera here. It's having a little trouble focusing. There it is. Hey, bud. How you doing? You're a good boy. <laughs> there he is. What a good boy. How you doing? So, uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get started and uh, take a look at some video games. So today I'd like to go over two... Uh, publisher developers that um, I think are they're kind of no-brainers they're low-hanging fruit this is the kind of thing that collectors are already going to be pretty uh, keyed into so this might not be as um, sort of enlightening a video from a um, you know the perspective of being really uh, surprising and unique but uh, these are certainly sought-after titles uh, we're gonna start off here with Square Enix or Square Enix okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and start here with Dragon Quest Swords now, uh, this is a game uh, I haven't really played. I don't know a whole lot about it. Um, you know, it is sort of exciting because uh, you're following in, in sort of that motion controls um, where you're, you get to swing a sword around, um, which is kind of cool. Obviously, in the, um, the Dragon Quest universe, um, so that's very cool for people that dig that. Uh, this is one of those games that's relatively common. Um, you know, I think you see it around. It's not super hard to, to come by. Um, you know, it's not going to be super expensive, but definitely the kind of thing I think you're going to want to keep an eye out for, uh, for now, especially if you want to get all the Square Enix stuff on the Wii, which I would highly recommend. Next up, um, something I don't know I can say the same things about. This is Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Echoes of Time. Now, this happens to be one of those ones that also has a version on the DS, and from what I read, um, there was actually like cross compatibility with the DS version of this game and the Wii version of this game, um, which seems pretty unique. I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe other games on the Wii did that. I actually, uh, you know, honestly don't know a whole lot about the Wii. I've never been super invested in the the DS, uh, you know, as a platform. Um, but uh, but it's certainly a unique feature of this particular title. And another thing to point out is I I, I didn't know this existed for the longest time. Um, I've never seen it in the wild, uh, to this day actually. The only reason that I have a copy of this is uh, I was actually buying another game, which I'll show in just a moment, um, at GameStop, and they, they confused the discs, and they accidentally gave me the disc for this game instead of the disc for that game. Now having the disc, I figured, well, instead of just taking it back, uh, I went online and I saw that I could get uh, the box art and the manual for it, so I went ahead and got those and put this uh, edition together, this this game. So another Frankenstein game here. Um, I would I would call this hard to find. Um, you know, wh whether it is or not, I don't know. But I'd certainly never seen it before. I know I would have noticed this before. And uh, I've just, like, never heard of it or seen it anywhere. Uh, you know, I don't even really know for sure whether it's a, a port of the DS game, but it seems like they, they might have been... I don't know, it doesn't seem like they would have been necessarily released at the same time, but maybe they were. Um, this was a relatively early Wii game, as far as I know. Um, you know, it does, does say join with other adventurers, whether they're on the Nintendo DS or the Wii, and undo the echoes of time. So, very interesting uh, game. If I would say if you guys, you know, see this, definitely pick it up. Uh, next up, we have uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. The Crystal Bearers. Now, I would say this is a much more common game. Uh, I definitely see this around. It was released uh, later than uh, Echoes of Time. Uh, it didn't have a DS companion. I guess, obviously, it would have been a 3DS one, and it did not have any such thing. Um, again, I don't know a whole lot about this. Um, 
you know, it's not tremendously pricey, uh, it's not tremendously hard to find. You know, if anything, I might call it a little uncommon, but I don't even know about that. I've, I've definitely seen copies of this around. Um, it's certainly something that's been available on my store, I'm not sure that it is right now. Um, but as always, um, you know, if you're interested in any of these games, these are the kinds of games that I try to keep in stock on my online store, so please take a look at that uh, in the description and um, check it out. I always have games in excellent condition, um, you know, protected with uh, uh, case bags and manual bags and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so Square Enix, there is one game uh, published by them on the... Um, the Wii that I don't have, which is also a game that has a DS version, interestingly enough, and that is Pony Friends 2. Uh, you guys can probably assume why I don't have that, um, but, you know, Square Enix did not release all that many games on the Wii if you want, you know, all of the games that they released on the system. You may want to pick that up. I may want to pick that up. Uh, it's probably not expensive. Um, it's nothing I've ever looked for, so I don't know how easy it is to come by. Um, and, it, and it is available on the DS as well. Uh, it is uh, uh, developed, I forget the developer's name, but they, they appear to be a North American developer. Um, and, you know, this is something that the 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 Wii what was really prone to was lots of shovelware and as far as I know pretty much every developer or you know publisher got on board with shovelware for the Wii. Um, moving on now to Atlas. Um, you know Atlas is kind of a, again a no-brainer. This is a company that um, you know anybody that collects games is going to be familiar with. Um, you know if you're collecting games uh, Atlas games are sought after so you're probably going to want to have these in your collection. Um, this is one I've mentioned before, Baroque. Um, it's something I don't ever see anymore. I would call it at this point hard to find. Uh, I didn't really check online to see like what this goes for in particular. Um, you know, certainly I'll be keeping an eye out for this uh, if I could, you know, get copies that I can, uh, you know, sell in my store. Uh, I will definitely make it available, but it's just something I haven't seen for for years. Um, this also has a version on the PlayStation 2, so um, you know it is available on that platform as well. Um, but the, the Wii version uh, is something that I, I don't see around anymore uh, at all. It was a very cheap game at GameStop. I think I literally got this for like $2. Uh, it was, they were just giving them away. Uh, next up is Shiren the Wanderer. Now, um, you know, this is a game, uh, if you guys uh, watch Crack Lotus, I was just watching his, his latest video. Um, he was doing a little vlog talking about some pickups and things like that, and uh, he mentioned this game. Um, I forget exactly the context in which he was mentioning it, but he was just saying that, you know, this used to be a game that, um, you know, it was super cheap at GameStop, and it is. Um, you know, you find this game for like, I don't know, five to eight bucks or something at GameStop. It's just, it was just sitting on the shelves forever. Um, I can tell you that I um, have definitely had at least one or two copies of this in my store that have sold. Um, and, you know, I was selling them for the, the going rates uh, on eBay, um, which have been reasonable uh, up until now. But um, I just double-checked uh, Crack's information, and it does look like the last handful, maybe like just two or three sales um, out of the last four or five sales, have really gone for quite a bit more. Uh, one, one auction that was bid all the way up to $75, um, and like one or two... Um, I, think, I think they might even buy it now. Is that we're like all, almost a hundred dollars, or, or right around a hundred bucks. So, um, you know, it all depends on, on how much these games are available and how much people want them. Regardless, this is a uh, you know classic uh, roguelike dungeon crawler, and um, you know I've had my copy of this for quite a while. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't really played it, but I played a little bit of the one on the, the Dreamcast, uh, which is, is totally cool. Uh, it's a, they're, they're nifty games, uh, you know, if you can get into roguelikes, uh, which are a, a pretty unique thing, but, um, you know, definitely something you want to have in your collection, and, you know, one of the reasons I'm making these videos and trying to get the word out here, obviously, uh, maybe I was a little too late on this one, is, you know, these things get sought after, and you want to get them while the getting's good. Uh, next up, we have Trauma Center, New Blood. Now, uh, this is a series I've never been into. Uh, I kind of just got these, you know, again, for a collection. They were cheap. They're Atlas. Uh, etc. Um, the whole medical theme I think is, is super cool. I'm just not into it because like it just I know sort of creeps me out. Um, but you know it's as far as I know you use like the motion controls to basically perform surgery in like an emergency room and things of that nature. Uh, again I haven't really played these um, but they seem really interesting. You know they have nice character designs. Um, 
uh, this this was a seemed like a popular series on the DS. Now um, this is nothing special in terms of rar rarity. Um, it's pretty common, you know. You see this game around. Um, it doesn't go for a whole lot. Uh, we're talking, you know, a ten dollar game essentially, and. Um, uh, yeah, you know, but again, if if you're you know looking to collect for the Wii, you might want to pick this up while while you can. Um, same here with Trauma Center Second Opinion. This one again uh, seems to, you know, I see it around fairly frequently. Uh, it's fairly common. Doesn't seem to be super sought after right at this moment. Um, so you know, again, something that you're going to want to keep an eye out for. Um, interestingly, the the final um, game in the series for the Wii. Trauma Team um, seems to be much harder to come by. Uh, it's going to go for about double um, the other games uh, for right now. Uh, I expect that to go up. Um, I had never seen this game before. I finally like just ran across a copy um, out in the wild, uh, which I was really glad to find, and I snatched it up. Um, I have a feeling that this is going to go up uh, in you know in value. Uh, you know, if you're speculating on stuff like that, or if you you just want to have um, you know, these games in your collection, which is, is, is what I hope, um, either, you know, either to play or just, um, just, just to have, um, yeah, keep an eye out for this one, because I'm going to call it hard to find, um, you know, I haven't really looked into it on eBay, like how many copies may be available there, but, um, it's certainly out in the wild, nothing I've seen, uh, other than the one time I picked it up. And that's just about it. Uh, there is a game uh, also by Alice that I don't have, which is, uh, Dokopan Kingdom. Um, it's something that I've heard, talked about quite a bit um so I, I you know i have a feeling if you're collecting on the wii you probably already know about this game but um it's uh as far as i know going to be one of those ones because it's relatively well known and it's quite sought after i think it's already rather expensive uh, i don't have a copy of it uh, it's also available on the ps2 uh, and that was a you know a, a north american release uh, i believe it was released in japan and in europe so um you know, you, you have options if you just want the game PS2 or the Wii, but uh, the Wii version is definitely very sought after, and I have a feeling that it's uh, it's getting it's getting rather pricey uh, at this point. So definitely, if you find a copy of that for a good deal, uh, I certainly would would snatch it. Um, although I you know I don't even know if it, like it looks like that great a game. I'm not quite sure what's going on with the Dokapon craze, but maybe I just need to uh, you know check out some more of the, the hype on that. But um, anyway, those are my um, collection Voodoo uh, uh, games here for our, our fourth installment. I uh, hope that you enjoyed this. I uh, hope this is helpful for you for, you know, uh, finding games on the 7th gen systems that you're interested in collecting for. And uh, I hope that you will go ahead and check out my online store. Uh, you know, as always, uh, we try to keep these kinds of games in stock uh, for you guys. And, um, you know... Grab, grab them while the getting's good. And I hope you'll join me again for more anime and video game related videos. Take care.